Hello everyone, welcome back to another video from Somos Magazine. This video is going to be very important for your career. This is about the resting membrane potential of cell membrane. This series of two videos we are going to talk about the resting membrane potential and action potential of cell membrane. And this is something which is totally conceptual. You need to understand this process and not mugging it up. This is going to be useful for any PhD entrance examination or MBBS year examinations. So let's hop in. Resting membrane potential. First we'll understand what is resting membrane potential. Then we'll take it uh, in the next lecture about the action potential. So first of all what we need to talk about the resting membrane potential. What is the resting membrane potential? In very simple words, the voltage difference across the cell membrane when it's measured is known as a resting membrane potential in the resting state. So if a cell is not uh, so in very simple words what I can say about the resting membrane potential is the voltage difference across the cell membrane in its resting state will be termed as resting membrane potential. So when a cell is not influenced by any ligand or by any sort of uh, alteration or a cell is not involved with any uh, impulses in that condition is known as the resting state of the cell. In that resting state, if you put an electrode through the membrane and measure the voltage difference across the membrane, so in very simple terms we can say that this is the cell and this is the membrane. All the membrane is bilayered, but here I am showing only with single line or single line color. So if we put the voltage, so what voltage we are going to see is the representation of the membrane uh, potential difference across the membrane and usually what happens is that when you put the uh, electrode and measure the voltage across membrane usually in the resting state we find more negative in the cytosolic site and more positive to the extracellular site this is what we receive so once we receive this, in very simple case, what we can see that the cytosolic side have a negative charge and extracellular space has a positive charge. And that's why the voltage comes near about 70 minus 70 millivolt. This is approximation value, minus 70 millivolt. And this minus 70 millivolt is known as a resting membrane potential. Remember that. Okay, resting membrane potential. In the resting state, when you put the electrode, the voltage is negative to the cytosolic side, positive to the extracellular side. Now the question is why so? Why this thing happen? Okay, we need to find it. That's what our job is. We are going to find this quite easily. Okay. So <clears throat> to understand this resting membrane potential and how the cell maintains the resting membrane potential. You need to know that resting membrane potential or any kind of membrane potential uh, is generated due to the presence of ions and the concentration of ions across membrane. What are the ions we are talking about here? We are talking about sodium ions, we are talking about potassium ions. Okay, These are the two types of ions that are actually involved in maintaining resting membrane potential and also to generate action potential. They are the responsible ions. What other components we need along with the ion concentration? The second thing that we need are ion channels. Ion channels. What are ion channels? Are channel proteins which are present in the membrane, embedded in the cell membrane. So let's say this is sodium channel, this is potassium channel. There are specific channels. So sodium channel is a place through which sodium go in and out. Potassium is the channel through which potassium goes in and out. Clear? Now, these ion channels are of different types. They are leaky ion channels and there are gated ion channels. Gated ion channels are by default closed and they will only be opened if a sudden ligand bind to them which is a signaling molecule that will bind to them, then the channel opens up. Or 
after a certain voltage is reached certain voltage is reached across the membrane then some of these channels will open up otherwise they will remain closed clear while leaky channels are always open leaky channels are always open clear until this part if you understand you are almost halfway there to understand resting membrane potential now i am going to tell you how exactly the resting membrane potential will be maintained now among sodium and potassium channels in cell in our body in eukaryotes you see in human body potassium channels are more abundant they are present more often than sodium channels so there are more potassium channels then there are sodium channels get this idea more potassium channels than the number of sodium channels in the membrane what kind of channel we are talking about leaky channel we are talking about we are talking about leaky channels more sodium uh, more potassium leaky channels are present than sodium leaky channels now what these channels do the channel only operate in one direction they are unidirectional or bidirectional in this case the channel can open in both the directions but these channels are present for passive for passive diffusion so in diffusion what happens movement always from high concentration towards low concentration isn't it i believe you know this idea in 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 passive diffusion what happens molecules or the solutes move from high concentration to the low concentration so now in our body always this is the default condition always keep in mind that the sodium is present more outside of the cell and potassium is present more inside of the cell potassium is present more inside of the cell sodium is present more outside of the cell this is the general default setting in our cell across the membrane so try to sum up everything we know about the channels we know the leaky channels more potassium leaky channels are there than sodium channels and we know that the sodium is more outside potassium is more inside so once you understand this i'll take you to the next slide next page where i'll explain the process now very clearly try to understand this this is cell membrane okay that's a bilayer of membrane and uh, we have this sodium channel we have this potassium channel this is potassium channel and this is sodium channel and what's going on here i'll explain that now this is cytosol and this is extracellular matrix okay outside of the cell now what's going on at this point is that there are more potassium channels and what we know is that sodium is more outside potassium is more inside sodium is also there but in very low concentration inside potassium is also there outside but in very low concentration so this is the overall scenario now at this scenario what would happen is that let me take a different color the red one what would happen is that the leaky potassium channels are open so once more and more potassium leaky channels are open so what this potassium will do is that the potassium is present more inside less outside so potassium will be transported out so the potassium start moving out because the leaky channels are present and number of potassium channel is high so more and more potassium will start flowing outside of the cell but what happens to the sodium leaky channels first of all the sodium leaky channels are present in lower number second thing sodium is more outside so sodium should come inside 
so sodium will start to be pumped inside via the sodium leaky channel so this process continues potassium leaky channels will take potassium ions outside of the cell sodium leaky channels will bring sodium inside of the cell and this tussle will go on between sodium leaky channels and potassium leaky channels and we are talking about only plus ions positive charge ions right there is no negatively charged ions involved in resting membrane potential all about positively charged ions so sodium is pumped out potassium is pumping in but this tussle who will win this tussle the answer to that is guess potassium because there are more potassium leaky channels than the sodium channels so more and more potassium will be pumped out then amount of sodium that is pumped in and we know potassium and sodium both are plus 1 in charge plus 1 same so what happens is that more and more potassium will be pumped out so more potassium will be pumped out and less sodium pumped in so that means more and more plus ions are pumped out but less plus ions are pumped in so what would happen at the end as a result there would be a slight negative charge there would be a slight negative charge comparative negative charge inside to the cytosolic side of the membrane and slight positive charge to the extracellular side of the membrane this is the formation of resting membrane potential this is why resting membrane potential is formed now the question is due to this tussle between sodium and potassium channels the resting membrane potential is originated the mild negative charge across the membrane to the cytosolic side is originated because there are more potassium leaky channels than the sodium leaky channel this is the most important statement out there without knowing that you never ever understand the process of resting membrane potential in your life and now you should never forget that in your life okay this is the situation and this is something related to minus 72 uh sometime uh sometimes so it is minus 72 minus 90 sometime millivolt minus 72 minus 90 millivolt this is the voltage that we can measure across the membrane at this particular condition in the resting membrane potential now why we call it as a resting because let's say the membrane is not excited by any excited uh, or excited neurotransmitters or any sort of chemical that can excite a membrane because we know there are gated channels ligand gated channels out there there are voltage gated channels out there which can be triggered to open in response to a ligand in response to a voltage okay which we will study in the next lecture regarding the action membrane potential so action potential of membrane how it is generated and all we'll see that now the thing is in this way the, always the resting state the membrane remains like this and if the sodium and potassium balance is disturbed you can ask this question at the end like due to this what happens the sodium potassium balance may be dis disturbed because sodium uh, is being pumped inside and potassium is being pumped outside of the cell that balance is done after all these things are done the balance for balancing we have one more structure out there we have one more structure and that is known as sodium potassium atpas pump which is an active transporter that is present in there sodium potassium atpas pump that can rebalance the sodium and potassium concentration across the membrane in order to initiate the process again and the sodium potassium pump is not only present to maintain the resting membrane potential to balance the sodium potassium levels but also to maintain <clears throat> the action membrane potential and to to re, uh, what you can say the uh, rebalance the sodium potassium concentration after the action potential so that the next round of action potential can be generated which you will see in the next lecture so do not forget to see that lecture as well so if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends subscribe to get more videos like that in future thank you bye